Hi, this is PD of Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial 214. Now there was still one more thing I wanted to do before we actually get into loading up our stats. And I wanted to take a look at our PC script. Uh, so let's go ahead and open that up. Uh, if we notice right now when every time we try to uh, gain access to this, we're always calling its awake method. And while that works, it doesn't re it's not really the best way to do it. Uh, because we're actually attaching this script, if you look uh, up here, uh, well, well, we're not attaching, we're instantiating a prefab that already has uh, the script attached to it. Uh, so the awake technically gets called twice. It gets called once when we call the awake, and once when this prefab gets instantiated. It might make a little bit more sense if we actually follow the logic of how these methods are called. Uh, so I'm in my character generator script, and I'm going to come down to the awake function here. And I'm just going to throw a debug log in there, uh, just for demonstration purposes. And I just want to show how to follow the flow uh, of your program. So I'm just going to call, well, I'm going to say this is my character generator. So basically the name of the script, I'm going to put a space, hyphen, space, and then the method. Uh, just so I can see when certain things are being called. I'm going to cut and paste that and I'm going to come down to my start function and I'm going to paste it in the start and change the method that's being called. Uh, there's nothing else here. I'm going to actually just get rid of a lot of this commented stuff. There we go. Uh, we're not using this anymore. Okay, so I've commented the first two functions here. I want to go over to my PC script. And I'm going to change this a bit. And this is my PC script. And this is my instance method. And I'm also going to throw one in here in awake, just above the base awake. Actually, I'm just going to copy and paste this one here. It's just easier to only have to retype the method name. Now, oh, let's, go, let's go back. And so let's follow the flow here of how things are working. Now, so take a second here and think about it. When I start this up, uh, what exactly is going to happen here? The first thing that is going to launch, you know, for a hint, will be our character generator script. So what order do you think our debug log statements will be? Uh, pause the video and think about it for a second. I'm going to start it up. And well, let's take a look. So we've got the character generator awake. Uh, we've got the instance method being called. Uh, then we have the PC awake. Then PC awake again. And then the start method. So if we stop that, I'm going to open up the script. So I'm going to drag them over a bit and we'll just follow that. So here we are. We're calling the awake which is you know what, what it's supposed to do when the game or when this scene first starts up. This is the first method that's supposed to be called. And then we go over to PC instance and that's because we're actually calling the awake method here. But before it can call this awake method, it actually has to uh, create its static instance. So it goes through here and that's where we're getting this statement here and it goes through and it makes its game object and uh, it does all its checking and everything else. And then it comes down to the awake part of uh, this statement here. It does this here. So now it goes in and it does this. Let me clean this up a bit. And then we notice down here, it gets called again. And that's because the item actually gets instantiated in game. Now I'm not 100% sure which one's being called first, if it's the, the awake function from it being instantiated in the game or the awake function that we're actually calling from this script. Uh, it's the exact same awake function. Uh, right now, the way we have it set up, it's not really a problem because we have this initialized value here. And the first time it goes through, it's going to, since it's set to false by default, it's going to go ahead and load up all of our character stuff. And then when the second awake comes through, it sees that it's already initialized and it doesn't bother going through there. Uh, and right now, it's really fine for what we're doing. Uh, but we really should kind of clean this up because it's really not that hard. It's one more function. And it does get rid of, you know, calling this twice. 
So what I'm going to do is come in here and create another public static function. I'm just going to return void for now. And I'm going to call it initialize. And all I'm going to do is come in here and I will take instance this and we'll also do this. Okay, so now that we have this set up this way, what we can do is change the method that we're calling here to this one. And let me add a debug statement here as well. And we'll just probably comment it. And I actually don't want it to be a static. I'm sorry. I just want it to be a regular function. I will come back in. And let's start it up. And look at the flow now. So now we're getting the character generator awake, which is what we want. And then we call the instance initialize. So it comes down, it creates the instance, which it has to do before it can call any of its uh, other functions. Uh, so it calls its awake, and then it calls the initialize. So let me just scroll, uh, close this up a bit. So it's calling the awake function of the game prefab that we actually create first. And then it's calling the function that we had. So it looks like when we had the double awake, it was actually called the game prefab awake first. And then we're going to the start. Now, this is the way I want to do it because uh, although I'm not really doing anything in awake, uh, I might want to do something in awake a little later on. And this could kind of screw us up. Uh, so I'd rather do it now than later on. Uh, but we might have several instances of calling this uh, this function. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the other scripts. There's not that many. There's only three. If we go on to the next scene, which is the customization. And the script we'll want to take a look at here is our one that we have attached to our character mount, which is the player model customization. And actually, there's probably a few scripts in here we might have to look at. And we're going to want to look for is the... Uh, PC dot instantiate or instance dot awake. And <laughs> make sure you spell it right. All thumbs today. So it's not finding it in this script. I thought we did use it, but apparently we didn't. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, there was a hair script as well. And it doesn't look like we have the awake here as well. I'm just going to cut and paste that. So I'm actually just going to start the scene up and just see if everything's working. So I am going to have to go into full screen because actually not for this scene. Everything should work not in full screen. It might look a little funny, but it should work. So we are a character. It's loading it up. Uh, I can rotate them. Hair does not seem to be working. And neither does the color. So let me just go back and take a look in here. Uh, let's see where we're getting all the references to the instance. We have five. So we're getting the hair mount there. We're hair mount here. Again, the hair mount. Hair mounts and hair mounts. So there's actually no reason why it shouldn't work. Let me just come back and s ah. Had it highlighted. Uh, we don't want the instance here in our initialize. We always want that in awake. And after a call to your base class, if you are inheriting a class, uh, actually, it doesn't really matter. I don't think if it's before or after. It depends really what you're doing in your awake. Uh, for me, I just I want the base awake called first, always in um, in your awake function. Uh, now let's go ahead and try that out. That's probably all we needed to do to get this scene working. So basically, we're just going to go through our scripts and change uh, where anywhere where we called uh, what was it the the awake function of our PC instance and change it to call the initialize. So that's working. We got hair working. That's working. Great. So next, we'll go into our actual game scene. And right now, I'm actually just calling it in our script. Uh, let me see. We'll start it up. We'll switch over to that scene. 
I believe I'm just calling it from uh, my GUI. And I eventually do want to move this to my uh, character, or not my character, my, uh, I'm all tongue-tied today. I eventually want to move it to some sort of Game Master script. But for now, I'm just going to keep it here because this is one that we actually do have in game that we are currently working on and should always you know be in the scene right now so we're going to call the initialize and that actually should be it for this one as well so it should load up with all the whatever we saved i can't actually remember what i saved i'm um, thinking i saved short um let me just run up here. Well, let's go ahead and just try it out just to make sure it is loading everything up fine. It should be, but you can never be too careful. So we're going to character customization. Start it up. I'm going to give him um, white hair, uh, something with a mustache. <laughs> there we go. The Burt Reynolds mustache. And we'll give him dark. Ah, let's give him real pale skin. He's from the north. There we go. And it looks like it uh, saved off and loaded up. So that's everything I wanted to think cover in the last two tutorials. So next we're going to be moving on to creating our character panel in game. And for that we're going to have to load up our our attributes in that in this scene. Uh, but as you see it's, it's pretty easy. Uh, the hard part is really, well there isn't really a hard part. It's just going to be laying it out in the screen. But anyway I'll see everyone later. Bye bye.